Is you today, Van Doctor will be in GP time or get a special worker girls compact academy on campus. All of a special minutes and CK in kept right to the right and all that for I to end the Lord. Every creep up. Flight that's been air to keep to our good on bun eyes. Flight arrivals and deliver this same drinks and he is coming. The Junction Africa, and now it's time to lie from Canada. Of the compact from March 28th, hours daily, service hours Sunday. Oh, my camera. Vote for uh, your main opposition. You have with this the elders and ministers and prince. Him, you and young adults, and you. A special guest ration to live miniature own world via all our souls. The name of Shut. Jesus, the gospel chai with us. After flight born, if it will be called to and of a big cry, the flight soul sold in this same print in moon, then set for GC Groon, the ray and promise. Expression of GP 3rd through 2020, 1600 MT go at 0700 MT. At day do a zero so is Cody. Jalazer, dumb landings is east. We will nurse into minister and prince. Enemy, will you and young adults? We also guest music in but from Africa. And straight out of social media, what I news for the law say, K. After full K, fly over G and off a big cry. When the phone so heal, this is the Maroon Weston's time for from Camera of Glory. Come compassion from March 28th, hours daily ship 700. Hour on Sunday. Don't do all it. Several so you may not mean up. Nash Aster, you have come this up. Be it ministers, profession, impact of you. Yes, we also brought music in by from New Jersey. Old via Sarah Soltz. The Evashnit. Every flaw. This bit. What's it? I was on a bundle. Flight arrived. Souls and this same prince and he is. And central for GC Prune, Glory and Home Expansion of Rinse of 28 at 60 service at Ors Sunday. Oh, the camera vote for uh, your mirror in a port national docum ye Saint Prince. This time ministry at church fashion impact ye for cows you expect minister and Louis Kaka in mid camera right to the right and ye apply a flash so all on the law say K all to every. Fly, fly over oh, she and all oh, a big cry. When the phone and soul healed, and this is the and moon. Weston's time for from Cameron of Glory. Come compassion from March 23. Hour daily ship 700 hour at Dobo. Zero so it's coming up. Past W wedding with the we will nurse and minister and perfs. Enemy will you and you the same. We also ask musician and I from a churn. Old via sad souls. Like the G air taking coffee every day we're going to London. I've been told we have a Jesus peace coming to Cameron Shell Africa and now we can lie the Lump Trump experience Jesus P third through twenty to sixteen G and go at O G A the Boon. Huh, I'm miracle. You today, Evangel Doctor, will be like Jesus. Peace. I'm for with a special worker, Old Contract Academy. All of a special guest race, Louis Day Law in miniature. The world via all our forms. You and the Nick Dave. Every flop. Flop has been. What's a key to every hour I go on London? I'd arrive. Will say to learn this same jeans of he is coming the junction Africa and now a okay, K the land of us. Jesus through March 23. MT will worship 700 MT on at do do several so you come in internet pastor W wedding with the we wilders and ministers first we will you young same vessel bring you sick by Jim Africa and saddle ocean yeah I shall Jesus a gotcher with us At DC born. If it's difficult to lie, I've been told we have saved. 
Jesus is thing to Ca Junction of Africa. Now it's to live from Cameroon and Prom. Experience of G's Peace 3rd through 2016 GM and go at 07 GMT at Ray Du. It's It's Cody. Illustrator W and Jesus is We wonder special minute. And Prince Anime. You all of as we all guess ratio it to line miniature room. The world be all for I'm the name to every flaw. I eat Obachi, our own abundance. Lighter right tolls until this same prince of he is the central at GC Prune. The end from the experience of G Search 28 at six weeks. Service at ours on Sunday. Oh, my Cameroon. Oh, Trova, you're married. In a portion of the Kumi Saint Prince of the Ministry at Church Fashion Impact for Adult and you bring you Daddy Seatrica in Catra and Electro Media. What I love for the Lord say Gospel. Flight after flight, the GCK has been airborne. We're taking a flight of faith over every difficulty, and we're going to land on life abundant in Christ. When the flight arrived in Togo, we have seen souls saved, healed, and delivered. This same Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he is coming to Cameroon the junction of West and Central Africa. And now it's time for GCK Live from Cameroon, the land of glory and promise. Come experience the compassion of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, from March 23rd through March 28th, 2023, at 1600 hours GMT daily, and global worship service at 0700 hours GMT on Sunday at Dobo, Bonaberry, Douala, Cameroon. C'est votre temps, you reçois un miracle. Your miracle is coming upon you today. International evangelist, pastor, Dr. W.F. Kumyi will be landing with this same Jesus, the Prince of Peace. This time, we will be equipped for wonders in ministry at a special minister's, church workers, and professionals conference. Impact Academy will be for children, youth, campus, and young adults all at the same venue, as we also bring you special guest music. Ministration by Dan Lewitton, GCK Live from Africa in miniature, Cameroon, and straight to the world via satellite and all our social media platforms. You are flying there, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. GCK, the gospel to every creature, Fly with us. Flight after flight, the GCK has been airborne. We're taking a flight of faith over every difficulty and we're going to land on life abundant in Christ. When the flight arrived in Togo, we have seen souls saved, healed, and delivered. This same Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he is coming to Cameroon, the junction of West and Central Africa. And now it's time for GCK Live from Cameroon, the land of glory and promise. Come experience the compassion of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, from March 23rd through March 28th, 2023, at 1600 hours GMT daily, and global worship service at 0700 hours GMT on Sunday. At Dobo, Bonaberry, Douala, Cameroon. C'est votre temps, you reçois un miracle. Your miracle is coming upon you today. International evangelist, pastor, Dr. W.F. Kumyi will be landing with this same Jesus, the Prince of Peace. This time, we will be equipped for wonders in ministry at a special minister's, church workers, and professionals conference. Impact Academy will be for children, youth, 
campus and young adults all at the same venue as we also bring you special guest music ministration by Dan Lewitton GCK live from Africa in miniature Cameroon and straight to the world via satellite and all our social media Take our gospel hymns and song, GHS 162. Please, if you have it, if you have the uh, booklet, you have it on your phone, please. GHS 162. Almost persuaded. Almost persuaded now to believe. Almost persuaded Christ to receive. Seems now some souls to say. Go, spirit, go thy way. Some more convenient day on the I'll call. Almost persuaded, harvest is past. Almost persuaded, doom comes at last. Almost cannot avail. Almost is but to fail. Sad, sad, that bitter will, almost but lost.
Amen. We shall now have uh, such a scripture teachings. Uh, our classes will be divided into various segments. The adults will remain in the main church hall while the youths will go up to the gallery and the children will go in line with the arrangement for the children. The topic today is Lesson uh, 51, Parable of the Wicked Husbandmen. We we'll have 25 minutes in all our classes. Thank you. So the parable of the wicked husband man. So let's look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 28. Matthew 21, 28. The first sentence in that verse says, but what do you think? Now, the, just like I gave the introduction, the conversation was going on. The, the scribes, the Pharisees, they were confronting Christ. And he now say, okay, 
Wait a minute. What do you think? Because he needed to bring an illustration they can understand. So he started with the first parable. So that's why the first parable today is the parable of the two sons. Now let's see the parable. He says a man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go walk in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterwards, he regretted it and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I will go. But he did not go. Then Christ asks a question. He says, Which of the two did the, the will of the Father in heaven? So, that was the first illustration he gave the scribes and the Pharisees. That which of these two boys, the first one said that we go, but later did not go. Now, what does that signify today? Or who does that, who does that boy represent, that, that son represent today? That son represent the people who initially they may not agree with the gospel of Christ. Initially they may not be recipient to the gospel. But when they go back home in their solitary moments, or maybe when they are faced with great tribulations or problems of life, they reconsider their ways and they come back to God. But the second son is the one that initially when God asks, will you go and walk in my vineyard? They are the people that will respond, maybe after a very powerful message, after a very powerful teaching. They are the people that will respond to God. They are the people that will pray and say, God, I will go. I will go and walk in your vineyard. But what we see from the second son is that he said he would go, but he did not go. And the, the question that will come to us today is which of these sons represent us? And as a young Christian, there are times when I've seen myself as the first and the second son, but those clearly pointed to me that there is someone else, there is something else I need to be, because the, both of the sons are not right. The first one said, I will go, but he did not go. But even the second one was not perfect, because even though he said he would go, he did not go. I'm sorry, even though he said he would not go, but that was not the kind of response that God expects from us when we hear his word. It's not the kind of response that we should even argue or debate. He expects us to respond to his invitation when he asks us to go. And I pray that the Lord will help us to respond to his word in Jesus' name. Now, what do we learn from here? We also learn from here that there are people who have made vows to God. Um, maybe before you came to the UK, you say, God, if only I can get to the UK, I will serve you. Or if only I can get a job, I will serve you. Or, or if only I can get to first class, or I pass my master's, my PhD, I will serve you. We are like the first son that gave God a promise, that made a vow to God, but did not go into the vineyard. And I pray that the Lord will help us today to go into his vineyard and do the work in Jesus' name. But the question is, what is even the vineyard? What does the vineyard represent? What does the vineyard represent today? The vineyard, we are going to see that more in, in point number two. But what the Lord is calling us to do today is calling us to go and preach the gospel in Aberdeen because this is our word. He's calling us to go and tell others about the gospel of Christ. And I pray that when the Lord calls us, we will not respond conditionally, but we will respond unconditionally in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to ask a question here. Why do Jesus always speak with parables? Who can tell us? Why do Jesus, why, why does he always like to speak? This is not the first parable we are seeing him speak with. So who can tell us, why do we think he always likes speaking in parables to the scribes and Pharisees? Or even to, to the disciples too, sometimes. 
So who can tell us? This, this search the scripture. This is an interactive class. So who can tell us why someone is raising up? Okay, thank you. Okay, that's another point. Yeah, so that it doesn't sound confrontational. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. So a parable is an earthly story with heavenly meaning. So Christ always liked to use what they are familiar with to pass his message across. So that's the first question. So the second question is, how should we respond to the call of God? When we know that God is calling us to do something, how should we respond to his call? So who can tell us? So we've seen the case of two sons. So how, do, how should we respond as Christians? Okay. Prompt and absolute. I like that. Thank you very much. So now let's look at our text. Matthew chapter 21, verse 28. Um, so we're going to read from verse 33 now. So we have seen the response of the two sons. That's the first parable Christ gave them. But as if that was not enough, he needed to make another illustration. So he gave them the parable of the wicked husbandman. So let's see from verse 33. Let's see the parable of the wicked husbandman. It says, another parable, there was a certain landowner. Now, in my version, it's called the landowner. In your version, it might be different. It might be the husbandman in your version. He says, who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it and dug a wine press and built a tower and, and leased it out or he gave it out to the vine dressers and went into a far country. Now when the vintage time or when the harvest is come, he sent his servant to the wine dressers that they might receive the fruit thereof. But the wine, the vine dressers took the servant, beat one, kill another, and stone another. And not, again, he sent other servants more than the first, but he did likewise unto them. Then last, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard came, what do you think he would do to the vine dressers? So that's the question God asked them from that parable. So it's still the question about, he wants them to make a judgment. You see, Christ is not the one, he wants them to be able to come to the conclusion them, themselves about what is right or what is wrong. So he wants them to make a conclusion about what do they think the Lord of that vineyard will do to the husband man. Now, what can we learn from this parable? From this parable, we can see, first of all, that the vineyard represents the children of Israel. So God made them a peculiar people. The hedge around the vineyard represents the law, the ordinances, the commandment of God that will keep them, that will guide them, that will instruct them every day. We see that the, husband, the householder, that's the man that planted the vineyard and traveled to a far country, is God himself. So God planted Israel. Now, this is the meaning of this parable. God planted Israel in the land of Canaan. He gave them the priests, the the, the, the leaders of the land to lead them in the path of righteousness so that they can bring the fruits of righteousness. So can you see 
the, the story Christ was trying to bring now. He's saying that he's, he was talking to the Pharisees that the reason that you are in charge of the temple is so that you can lead the people to bring the fruits of righteousness, love, holiness, joy, prosperity, and everything that God has asked them to do. But you are not doing it. So as a result of that, God, sent, God has been sending from in the Old Testament, that's what we see. He has been sending prophets. He has been sending different people to them. But they were killing the prophet. They were rejecting the prophet. So at last, God decided to send his own son to them. And Christ, at that point, was going to prophesy his own death. And he said that they would kill his son. But at that point, these scribes and Pharisees, they never knew that Christ was referring to them. Because the conversation was still going on. So what, do, what can we learn from here as individuals? First of all, we see that the Pharisees who were responsible, who were the responsible people at that time, in charge of God's ways. They did not lead the people right. They did not lead the people in the way of God. And that's one lesson that we, who are Christians, we are the light of the world, and we are here to lead the people to bring forth the fruits of righteousness in this nation. We also see that the prophets who God sent to them were persecuted. Some of them were even killed. And the same thing hap is, hap is happening today with Christianity, especially in the UK. That people who want to stand for righteousness are being persecuted in this country that was once, you know, referred to as a Christian country. I'm sure you must have heard in the news this week of one of the ladies that is running for the post of first minister in Scotland because of her own personal opinion in marriage. Like she said, her own view of marriage, that it should be between a man and a woman. And because of that, she had so many oppositions, so many criticisms on social media and in the media generally, just because she said it's her own personal view of marriage according to her faith and she's been persecuted for standing for something that is true and again just to see the hypocrisy of the world the same the, the other people contesting some of them are of other religions that are even more strict in terms of all this um, gay right and all these things but they never face the criticism because nobody will be bold enough confront the people of other religion. But when it is Christianity, it's like the whole world is against Christianity. And I pray that the Lord will give us the courage to stand when we are persecuted in Jesus' name. So, let's move on. But you see that Christ was not afraid of these people because he wanted to make a point. But let's see another lesson we can learn from there. You see that these people, they believe they are the, the custodian. The, they are the ones that know the law. And even, even till today, you know, some people, you know, from Israel, not all, but some people still believe that they are, the, they are the ones that know the truth. They are the ones that are the people of God, that every other person, they still see every other person as, as Gentiles, that you don't know the truth. But Christ was trying to make an illustration that because of the position you have taken, it is very difficult for you to recognize the truth when you see it. And it, 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 it is pointing to our attitude as Christians. Sometimes because of the position, because of the things we know, when we come into the presence of God, we are not too open to receive his word because of what we already think we know. That's one lesson we can learn from there. But Christ is saying that he is the truth. He is the way. And I pray that we will respond to Christ in the right way in Jesus' name. So finally, they rejected Christ. But he kept on doing the Father's work. They started plotting how to kill him. 
So let's see a question here. The question says, what does the vineyard, the household at the hedge, what do they symbolize from the parable of the house, of the wicked housemaid, husbandmen, sorry. What does the, the vineyard, the household at the hedge, what do they represent in this parable? So let's talk. What? Okay, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir. So let's 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 move on to to the final point. In the final point, we'll still make reference to this second point. Let's see Matthew chapter twenty-one, verse forty-five and forty-six. Now, as a result of this parable, there was a reaction. You know, for every action, there is always a reaction. Now, when Christ, when this peop- when Christ was speaking. They now later realized that he was referring to them. He was not just speaking a parable about what has happened in the past, but he is actually referring to them. So what did they do? Let's see Matthew 21, verse 45 and 46. Matthew 21. It says, and he said to, to him, and they said to him, sorry, no, sorry, Matthew chapter 21, verse 45. Okay, yeah, verse 45. Say, now when the chief priests and the Pharisees had his parables, They perceived that he was speaking of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. But let's see verse verse 44. No, verse 43, sorry. Verse 43 says, Therefore I say to you that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. So that's where it started from. And whosoever fall on this stone will be broken, but whomsoever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Now, to pieces in your version. Now, Jesus was now telling them that because you have rejected the prophets, because you will kill the son, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to another nation that will, be, that will bring forth the fruit of righteousness. So when he said that, they now recognize that he is actually referring to them. So the, the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, when they perceived that Jesus was referring to them, they now decided to lay hold of him. But they were afraid just because of the people there that took Jesus to be a prophet. But what, what do we learn from there? Now, what we learn from this last point is that when we receive the word, when we come to church, for instance, or maybe we read our Bible, and it is very clear to us that what the preacher is saying to us is related to something going on in our lives. <clears throat> We should not be angry with the preacher because he is speaking what, about what the Lord is revealing to him at the time. Or he is speaking to your situation. If the world found you guilty, the best thing to do is just to repent. But those people, instead of acknowledging Christ, they wanted to kill him. And what's happening in our world today is a reflection of this verse. So when a Christian takes a particular position about marriage, 
they will try to attack you. They want to eliminate you. They want to, they call it cancel. They want to cancel you because you are not representing the view of the world. But I pray that nobody will cancel us in Jesus' name. But just because we need to close now, there was a story of a young man, a young, a very young child, maybe about five or eight years old. He was the son of a preacher. So one day he was home alone, um, and he was watching another preacher preaching. Now remember, he is the son of a preacher. His father has been preaching. You watch him all the time in church and everywhere. So his dad came home, and this boy ran to the dad and said, "Dad." You need to listen to this preacher I've been, I've been listening to. And the dad said, what did the preacher say? And the young boy said, well, you know, it's a, it's, he was, you know, he's a five-year-old or about six years old. So he said it in the way he saw the preacher illustrating it. He said the preacher was preaching, but he kept on saying something. At the end of the message, he said something that, at the end of life, God is going to ask us one question. And the dad said, what's the question? He said, what have you done with my son? And that was exactly the question that led to this, all these parables today. What have we done with Jesus? It's not about what the Pharisees did. It's not about what the scribes did. It's not about what the Jews did with Jesus. It's about us. What have we done with Jesus? And I pray that today we will respond to his invitation in Jesus' name. Let's pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for the revelation of your word. We pray that you help us. Like the, like the son that responded to you. That wherever we are now, whether we are running from you, help us to respond to your call today in Jesus' name. And Lord, help us that the revelation of your Son that you have given unto us through the gospel, we will not forsake that revelation of Jesus. That we will accept it. Even your word that will come for today, give us the grace to accept it. In Jesus' name we pray. Come and lead the praise section. Thank you.
Jesus name we pray shall we be on our feet as we worship the Lord together dear Lord we invite you into our presence into your into our midst today Lord take perfect charge accept all of our praise and worship today and bless our lives in Jesus name amen
Amen. Remain standing as we go to God in prayers. Let's open our mouth and bless the name of the Lord for the privilege he has given us to be in his presence. Let's thank him for the gift of life. Let's thank him for breath in our nostrils. Open your mouth and pray. The Bible says, bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my lips. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, we're in the presence of God. Let's feel free to pray. The Bible says, 21 verse 45. There failed not aught of all the good things which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. Amen. All came to pass. Why don't open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord for the fulfillment of his word in our lives. For the fulfillment of his word in our families. For the fulfillment of his word in the church. The Bible says everything came to pass. There was nothing whatsoever left. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. I appreciate you thank him. He's the giver of all good things. In Jesus' name we pray. It is now time for tithes and offering. Let's dip our hands into our bags and pockets. And bring out our tithes and offering. As we pray together now. It says, upon the first day of the week, let every man lay by him in store as God has promised him, that there be no gathering when I come. Let's raise up our tithes and offering as we pray together now. Our Father, we thank you for the joy of salvation. We thank you because you first gave yourself unto us. And here we are today, lifting up our tithes and offering in appreciation of a goodness in our lives. Lord, we pray, accept it and bless us in abundance in Jesus' name. The Bible says you open the storehouse of heaven, the window of heaven, and pour out a blessing upon us that there be no room enough to contain it. I pray, Lord, that will be our portion even today in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Very quickly, let's... Uh, Put our offerings in the offering bags as we remain in the mood of prayer. Let's thank God for how he has helped us through the month of January, the month of February. This is the last Sunday in the month of February. Perhaps you don't know. Let's open our mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, as we progress into March, open doors unto me. Pray, pray and tell the Lord. Say, Father, throughout the month of March, I will be marvelously helped. My family will be marvelously helped. The church of God will be marvelously helped. Open your mouth and pray. Tell the Lord. Say, I shall lack nothing good. No good thing shall be lacking in my life. No good thing shall be lacking in the church of God. No good thing shall be lacking in your family. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. It's a time to pray. Pray, pray and tell the It doesn't matter how January has been. It doesn't matter how February has been. The Lord says, I will do a new thing. Shall ye not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That time is coming. Why not pray and tell the Lord? As I step into the month of March, I march into the fulfillment of my breakthrough. Pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you because you are God all by yourself. We thank you because you are the God that answers prayers. The Bible says, unto thee shall all flesh come. And that's why we are gathered here today. We pray, O oh God, you look upon us from heaven, your dwelling place, and you pour out a blessing upon us today in Jesus' name. Innumerable blessing, Lord, release upon our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, this month of March, we will be marvelously helped. We will not lack anything good in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, fulfill your word in every heart according to your word, O God. According to Joshua 21 verse 45. Lord, none of your word will fail in our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you because it is done already. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Very quickly, let's have our seats. Uh, it, it is our custom to recognize and welcome uh, newcomers worshipping with us or new joiners, you know, worshipping with us for the first time. If today is the first time of worshipping here at the Deeper Life Bible Church Abiding, kindly signify by raising up your hand so that we can bring to you our pastor's greetings. Today is the first time. Thank you very much. Brethren, what do we say? You're welcome in Jesus' name. Very quickly, Sister Amaka Stakelechi, please 
take a step, go and welcome her, bid her greetings on behalf of the church, on behalf of the pastor. You are welcome, my sister. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, in case you don't know, that is the wife of our brother, Brother Augustine. If you, you can clap better. Amen. You see, sometimes last year, uh, November precisely, you know, we had a wedding in this church. He wedded. And by the grace of God, that is his beloved uh, wedded wife, you know, joining us for the first time. Praise the Lord. This year, you possess your possession. I don't know about you. I will possess my possession. And so shall it be for us in Jesus' name. At days of worship on Sundays like this, we gather here at um, 2 p.m. for uh, the Sunday devotional worship service. And on Tuesday, we gather online through our Zoom link for a period of um, expository and systematic study of God's word. We join the regional church in Glasgow to listen to our Father in the Lord, uh, Dr. W.F. Kumui. And on Wednesdays, we have uh, a time of prayer meeting every Wednesday by 6 p.m. Again, we have it on Zoom. Uh, many of us have not been in attendance. Please, we are encouraged by this as, uh, uh, announcement to join us at the next Wednesday prayer meeting. How many of us will join? Ah, no hands are up. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Um, on Fridays, we have our revival service, and it holds in the physical church here at 7 p.m. in the evening. Please, we all expected to be in attendance. Uh, by the grace of God, on Sunday, uh, 5th of March, we're having a special program. It is called Possessing Sunday. I thought you would say that after me. Possessing Sunday. You will possess all your possession without ought in Jesus' name. I didn't hear your amen. amen. The Bible says, pursue, overtake, recover how many? All. And so shall it be for us in Jesus' name. And on that Sunday, we are coming here fasting. We are observing prayer and fasting. The prayer and fasting Sunday. And then we are meeting here by 2 p.m. But your fasting should start ahead of time. And then uh, we are not just to come ordinarily. We are to come with our prayer requests. Come with them, not a few. And then we are to invite others to also join us in this service. It's a Sunday service of miracles. And the Lord will turn here to a miracle center in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, we'll be having uh, our monthly evangelism service on Saturday, 11th of March. I hope we are taking note of all these things. It's called the dawn day. It's a new dawn. Say it's a new dawn. It's a new dawn. You know, the Bible says in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word of God and did what? And prevailed. And so shall it be for us in the city of Aberdeen. And therefore, therefore, we shall be having our evangelism service. Please, I want us to come all out. 11th of March, Saturday. And the time is 12 noon. The venue will be announced to us in subsequent announcement. Also, <coughs> we shall be having our regional workers' confab, which holds on, the, on 18th of March, Saturday, 18th of March, and it holds via Zoom. Please, I encourage all our workers to take note of this announcement so that we don't miss it. Regional workers' confab, uh, Saturday, 18th of March. And we are connecting via Zoom. Again, we'll be having a regional combined service at Glasgow. Put your hands together for Jesus. And by the grace of God, this time it will take place on Sunday, the 19th of March, 2023, at 10 a.m. So please, let's start preparing our schedules, our shifts, our routers. Let's align it so that we can, you know, have ample time to prepare and be in attendance. And as you make it, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, the Lord has so much, you know, in store for us in the month of March. We'll be having a global crusade with Kumui. And that starts on Thursday, the 23rd of March. And the time is 5 p.m. till Tuesday, the 28th of March. And then um, this time around, the train is going to where? Who knows? Where is it going to? It's going to Douala, Cameroon. And um, by the grace of God, you will not miss your blessings also in Jesus' name. The details of the GCK crusade has been shared on the church WhatsApp group already. If you don't belong, if you are not on the WhatsApp group, please uh, see one of our ushers. He's going to get your details. 
and add you uh, to the group. Uh, brethren, I want to also, by this announcement, encourage us to keep praying for one another. We understand how times are this time. So please, let's keep praying for one another. Let's keep encouraging one another. Let's keep calling one another. The Bible says, let brotherly love do what? Continue. And in our midst, it will continue in Jesus' name. And then lastly, before uh, we read the Bible, um, for those that are wanting to see the pastor after service for prayer and counseling, the pastor is fully available today. Uh, please, immediately after service, make your way down to the right, the seat by the right, and be given the privilege to uh, see a pastor. Also, the women's prayer meeting holds tomorrow by 9 p.m., tomorrow the 27th of February, and the venue is Zoom. Please, we encourage uh, also to be in attendance, all our women, all our women. The Bible reading today is taken from the book of Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. The letter to the Romans, chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use 
into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. May the Lord help us to be heirs and doers of his word in Jesus' name. Stand up on your word. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every day we will live for the Lord. And we will experience the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. We've come to the climax of our Sunday worship service for today. And um, today being the last Sunday of the month as well. We have the privilege of listening to our Father in the Lord ministering to us. But before he comes up to minister, I just want to emphasize the announcement that was passed on before. That next week Sunday is going to be a special Sunday in our church yet. I thought somebody would clap for Jesus. <laughs> you know, this year, we've taken this year possessing our what? My possession. And that's why the Lord is leading us into this session. In fact, when the Lord gave it to me, I was wondering, I said, God, how are we going to do this? Just, just tell them. Every first Sunday of the month throughout this year is going to be the Sunday of possession. <laughs> and I thought, and you want to make that Sunday anything in your life or what you are looking for for this year and all throughout your life, bring them every Sunday, that first Sunday of the, of the, of the month, all throughout this year, God helping us. That Sunday, this Sunday is going to be a Sunday of the supernatural. It's going to be, in fact, the Lord says it's going to be Sundays of abundance, of miracles of you possessing your possession. 
so that when we come to the last month of December, you will look back and say, there is nothing left that you've not possessed. You will possess them. So we are starting this coming Sunday. I will be there. I will be here. 2 p.m., make sure you are here. And make sure you invite others as well. Because God is going to move mightily in our midst. And great things the Lord is going to do for us in Jesus' name. But then, today, we are going to have a foretaste of what God is going to do. And we're going to have our Father and the Lord ministering to us. And our children, we just quickly go to their children um, um, all now. So that they also we have the time of, you know, of having fellowship. And as we worship the Lord, as we come to this session, prepare your heart, prepare yourself, and great things God will do for you in Jesus' name. Let uh, some of our leaders help our children to just quickly move while we prepare ourselves for the message. Shall we all just rise up now? And those of you at the back, you know, let's come to the front. Let's come to the front. Come to the front before we pray. Just come forward. Come forward. Come close to pastor. Come close to pastor. Come forward. Don't sit at the back. If you don't have nursing babies that you are nursing, come to the front. Make sure there is no vacant seat in your front. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Let's prepare ourselves. Let's tell the Lord. Oh, our new couple, our special couple. Come, come, come. There is this. Come and occupy pastor seats. Come, 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 sister. Brother Augustine, come to the front. Come to that place there. Let's clap for them now. Let's clap for them. After the service today, we are going to pray for them. Amen. And we are trusting God. God, we do you know there are special. There are, there are special guests for today. So uh, just occupy that. Let us pray now. Let's just prepare ourselves and tell the Lord that as the word of God comes to us now, that the Lord himself will bless you, the Lord will minister his way to you. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the service today. Thank you for your love that gathers us together. Thank you for your spirit that enlighten us in your word, getting us ready, preparing the bride for the coming of the Lord. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your word will penetrate every heart and prepare us as wise virgins waiting for the bridegroom. We're asking, O oh Lord, that today, all that you still need to do, all you need to chisel out of every life, so that we'll be conscious of your coming, watchful for your coming, prepared for your coming, ready for your coming. You do it in every life in Jesus' name. Make us all ready that when the Lord will come, none of us will be ashamed in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shout, Amen. Amen. We're coming to Revelation chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 1, reading from verse 15, and reading from verse 19. Revelation chapter 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Understand? Upon the earth, not only Jerusalem, not just Judah, not just Israel, not just uh, a part of the world, pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Verse 15. It says in verse 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his comings, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Verse 19, it tells us, And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine 
of the fierceness of his wrath. We have said it over and over. The believers will not go through the great tribulation. True. But understand that the Antichrist, a man, a lawless man, a wicked man, a cruel man, a man that will come to devastate the whole earth at the time of the great tribulation. Listen to this. He will not be a baby at the time of the rapture of the church. He would have been in the world. He would have been preparing to be a great leader of the world. He would have known that the world is waiting and looking and searching for a man that will guide them and the world will be looking for peace. And this is not the Antichrist, will not be a baby, it will be a man that had been in the world while we're here. Only preparing his way and finding a path, a path of supposed peace to come to reign over the earth. Actually, the ten kingdoms of the world that will be under the direct leadership and rulership of the Antichrist, they would have been developing. And then the time will come when the rapture will take place. And when the rapture takes place, then the great revelation will come in terrible force. But the Antichrist would have been here. He would have been doing some of the things he will do. At the time of the great revelation, he would have been doing that in preparation for this full swing of his reign. So understand that while the church is still here, the Antichrist would already be here before the rapture of the church. He is not coming from heaven. He is not coming as a grown-up man created like Adam. He is a person of the world and he would have been here. That's the reason why even at this time, in the last days, before the rapture of the church, while the Antichrist may be somewhere growing up and developing and developing all his strategies, that's the reason why the church at this time will be watching. That's what we're talking about today prayerful watchfulness in the last days we're living in the last days any moment from now the rapture can take place and because we're living in the last days you and i in the last days we need to watch we need to pray so that when the lord will come and then he will take the church home and the antichrist will come forth and come through in the whole earth and rule with cruelty and bring unprecedented wrath on this earth, you and I will not be here at that time in Jesus' name. Prayerful watchfulness in the last days. There are three things we're looking at as we look at this. Uh, as we look at this chapter number one, the perverted wonders of the foul, filthy beast. The perverted wonders of the foul, filthy beast. Number two, the prayerful watchfulness of fixed, faithful believers. The people who are going to be ready, who are going to go with the Lord when he comes, that the people that set their face like a flint, they are looking for the coming of the Lord, and they are waiting for the coming of the Lord, and they set their mind, they set their focus, they set their gaze, they set their affection, they set their attention on the coming Christ, and they remain faithful. Not the people who are wishy washy believers, the people you don't know where they are, one leg in the world and one leg in the church, the people you don't know, they have one mind for the world and the other part of their mind for heaven. The people who are going to get ready for the rapture, for the coming of the Lord, are the people who are faithful, focused, and fixed believers waiting for the coming of the Lord. Number three, the punishable wickedness of falling, forsaking Babylon. Babylon will be so dirty and so defiled that God will say he's giving himself to fornication. And to fill this, Ephraim, in this case Babylon now, is devoted, is giving to idols and filthiness. Let him go. Forsaking of God, and then it will fall woefully. It says, the punishable wickedness of falling, forsaking Babylon. Number one. Number one is the perverted wonders of the foul, filthy beast. We're coming back to Revelation chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 1. Revelation chapter 16, we're looking at verse 1. As we look at this section, the perverted wonders of the foul, filthy beast, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, unavoidable punishment for lawless worshippers. The people of the world will be lawless. The people of the world will be disorderly. The people of the world will be adamant in their rebellion against God and they will worship the beast and their punishment will be unavoidable. Number two, undisclosed power. 
of lying wonders. There will be lying wonders, deceptive miracles that the beast will perform, the false prophet will perform, but the world will not know about the source of those wonder signs and miracles undisclosed to them. And because of that, they will fall for the power of the Antichrist. Number three, on endurable plagues, something man cannot endure, unbearable, unendurable plagues for lustful wonders. There'll be people that we're wondering about. They wander from this assembly to that assembly. There will still be church echoes at the time when the great revolution begins. There will still be a kind of worship. You see, when the true church is gone, the militant church. The triumphant church, when that church is gone, the nominal church will still be on earth. And that nominal church will still be carrying on religion as usual. And then those who are wondering about because of the plagues, because of the pain, and because of the terrible things happening in the world, they wander from here to here, but they aren't going to find anything at all that will bring any ease for them. But they will have unendurable plagues because they are lost for wonders. Let's come to Revelation chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 1. Look at verse 1. It says, I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. All the seven angels will pour out the vials upon the earth. Look at the first angel in verse 2. The first angel were told, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. The first went out and he poured the vials upon the earth, and they were told they fell in noisome, grievous saw upon men, which at the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Look at the second angel. We're looking at verse 3. The second angel now in verse 3, and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. Let's look at the third angel, verse 4. In verse 4, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. Let's look at the fourth angel. We're looking at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Let's look at the fifth angel. This is in verse 10. In verse 10, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the siege of the beast that's upon the throne of the beast in the palace of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and big not their tongues for pain let's look at the sixth angel now in verse 12 in verse 12 it tells us and the sixth angel poured out his vials upon the great river euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared verse 17 the seventh angel and the seventh angel poured out his vial upon the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne of a saying it is done it is done it's complete it's fulfilled it's poured out upon the earth all those seven angels at the time of the great revolution they will pour out the wrath of god upon the earth understand upon the earth no country will escape the wrath and the indignation and the fury and the anger and the judgment that comes at the time of the great tribulation that's the reason why if anyone is going to get ready and escape the coming indignation the coming wrath it is now i pray you will not be here number one in this area is the unavoidable punishment for lawless worshipers look at verse 2 again in verse 2 it tells us and the first went out and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous so upon the men which had the mark of the beast look at this and upon them which worshiped his image which worshiped his picture which worshipped his statue, which worshipped the representation of the beast. Look at Isaiah chapter 13, we're reading from verse 9. Isaiah chapter 13, reading from verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. It's a time of wrath. A time of judgment upon the sinners on earth. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it tells us, And I will punish the world for their evil. 
some people say the time of the great tribulation will be a limited time a limited pouring out of the wrath of God upon a limited section of the earth not so not so look at that verse 11 I will punish the world for their evil anywhere in the world there is evil and there's evil everywhere there's evil everywhere all have seen and come short of the glory of God all are still sinning and they're coming short of the glory of God all the earth all the world and the wicked for their iniquity and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible in verse 13 it tells us it says and I, therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth I will shake the heavens and the earth. Don't think there's any, any place to go and hide. Any place there will be, there'll be a refuge at that time we get from the wrath of God. It will be upon all the earth and the earth shall remove out of her place. And in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. There will be anger at that time. Revelation chapter 11 reading from verse 18. In Revelation chapter 11 reading from verse 18. And the nations were angry and thy wrath has come. And the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, are small and great. Look at this, and shouldest destroy them that destroy the earth. That's one of the purposes of the wrath of God at the time of the great tribulation to destroy, to destroy them that destroyed the earth. They'll be unavoidable punishment of lawless worshippers. Look at number two here. Number two is the undisclosed power of lying wonders. In Revelation chapter 16, we're reading from verse 13. At that time, people, and the devil, when the devil does something that looks miraculous and that looks like wonderful, it is to seal their destiny, the destiny of the people of the world, so they will never listen to the truth. Look at this, Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouths of the dragon, number one, out of the mouths of the beast number two and out of the mouth of the false prophet number three those spirits like filthy dirty loathsome frogs what will they be doing at that time look at verse 14 in verse 14 for they are the spirits of devils they are the spirits of devils walking miracles you know there are people that don't have any discernment at all and because the, the undisclosed power of Satan is walking there and walking there, they're saying, well, miracle is miracle. Wonders are wonders. And I don't want to die like this and perish like this. Look at the problem I have. And they've been praying. You know, the kind of prayer they're praying is not soulish prayer. It's not spiritual prayer. It's not fervent prayer. It's not something that cuts deep into their heart. It's a superficial prayer that lies on the surface of the sea of their problem. And because of their superficial prayer not being answered, they say, they hear miracle is over there miracle is over there was the source of the miracle and what's the foundation of that miracle and what's the channel of that miracle they will not find out but it says in this verse 14 but they are the spirits of devils walking miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth of the earth every time it mentions the events and the devastations and the deceptions in this in this period of tri tribulation time it says of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now, the miracles of Christ will not point anybody to fight God. The miracles of Christ will not call anybody to fight sound doctrine. The miracle that Christ performs will make people to believe and to surrender and to give their lives to the Lord and to worship the true God and to turn away from the dead idols. But the miracles of the devil, the miracles of the fall of the false personalities of the evil spirit is to gather the people together, seal their mind, having their heart to fight against the day of God Almighty. Jesus already warned us that in the last days when it's about to come that the spirit of the Antichrist will already be at work and there will be all those false, deceptive pseudo miracle signs and wonders in Matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 24 here is the prediction the prophecy of the lord jesus christ but there shall arise false christs and false prophets and shall show great signs jesus said it will show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible 
they shall deceive the very image. The miracles that deceive the heart, the miracles that distract the heart, the miracles that turn away the heart from the Almighty God and from salvation, that's not of God. The miracle that turns away the heart from holiness and righteousness and from salvation from the Savior, that's not of God. That if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. In verse 25, Jesus said, Behold, I have told you before. I pray you'll not be deceived. I will not be deceived. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. It tells us about what will happen at that time of the great revelation. But remember that that mystery of iniquity is already at work even now, even before the coming of the Lord. Even him who's coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders deceptive wonders wonders that will lead souls away from the lord in verse 10 it says in verse 10 and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love for the truth that they might be saved there are people that say, well, what am I looking for? You talk to them about salvation, they say, I don't need that. You talk to them about holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. They say, what do I need that for? I have miracles already. I have signs already. Any sign, any wonder, any miracle that turns the heart of a man away from salvation, that's lying wonder. That's a wonder that makes wants the people to perish. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion or allow them to go their way that they should believe a lie. Miracles that come with lying wonders. Miracles that come with deceiving doctrine. Miracles that come with lies of the devil. And they believe a lie. In verse 12, it says that they all might be damned to believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Look at number 3. In number 3, it's talking about unendurable plagues. For lustful wanderers. And look at uh, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 21, reading from verse 16. It says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The man that wanders out of the way of understanding, he goes away from where salvation is preached, where the gospel is declared, where the good news of Christ of Calvary is made plain. He goes out, he's wandering about, and now he is in the congregation of the dead that the sound of the gospel cannot penetrate the ears anymore. And the light of the gospel cannot be bright before him anymore. And the sound doctrine that prepares us for the coming of the Lord is not relevant to him anymore. He faces the danger of perishing and is going to have an endurable place. Look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5. Uh, I'm reading from verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 12. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. There are people who believed in God in the past, but because now they're looking for miracle, they're searching for miracle, they, they don't know that the miracle is coming from Christ, and so they go to false Christs, they go to false uh, uh, places of worship, and they go to the Antichrist. They say Christ has not given them miracle. Antichrist, do you have any miracle for me? And the Antichrist say, well, if you allow me to harden your heart, if you allow me to seal your doom, if you allow me to put you in doom and damnation forever and ever, I can hand you whatever miracle for now for a few days to so enjoy that and then for all eternity there will be indignation and wrath and punishment and play for those people who are deceived it says having damnation because they have cast off their false faith look at verse 13 in verse 13 and with that they learn to be idle wandering about wandering about from house to house from congregation to congregation wandering about from assembly to assembly and not only idle but that lasts also and busy body speaking things they ought not. I pray it will not happen to you. Okay, I'll say it for myself. It will not happen to me. In Jesus' name. In Jude verse 13. Jude chapter 1, only one chapter. And we're looking at verse 13 there. It tells us raging waves of the sea, foaming out the ocean, wandering stars, wandering stars, wandering stars. They cannot stay and they cannot stand and they cannot be steadfast where salvation is where holiness is, 
what sanctification is there is something that is pushing them out of the congregation of the saints and they become wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever i pray that will not be you in jesus name we're coming to point number two point number two the lord is saying because the spirit of the antichrist is already at work he wants you he wants me he wants us at the church at the militant church that will become the triumphant church and the rapturable church he wants us to watch and to pray with a fixed mind with a faithful attitude and to remain believers until the very end the prayerful watchfulness of fixed faithful believers we're coming to revelation chapter 16 and we're reading from verse 15 behold i come as a thief if you judge christ to be truthful if you know christ to be truth personified whatever else you hear from any other person you know that christ has spoken the truth he said i come he is coming and then he said i will come suddenly while the ten virgins are asleep then the bridegroom will come the redeemer will come the king of kings the lord of lords will come it says behold i come as i see suddenly he will come and then unannounced a thief does not announce the time he comes to the house and knocks at the door i am here i announced to you before i sent information i was coming i am here get ready for me now i want to steal what is precious they know the thieves don't do that he says i come unannounced i come suddenly i come very soon I come when many of the people in the world will be asleep spiritually and they will not be ready. You'll be ready. I sleep but my heart is awake looking for the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be waiting for him. You'll be watching for him. And when he comes, you will not be taken unawares in Jesus' name. And then he says, Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and be see his shame. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the prophetic word on Christ's return. The prophetic word on Christ's return. Number two, the practical warning on constant readiness the practical warning on constant readiness number three our prayerful watchfulness with christ-like righteousness let's look at number one number one is the prophetic word on christ's return look at that chapter 16 of revelation again in verse 15 and remember these are the words of christ if Paul the Apostle says something by the Holy Ghost, we know that thing is real and is confirmed. If Peter, by the leading revelation of the Holy Ghost, says anything, we know that word is firm. When Christ himself, sent by the Father, energized by the Spirit, and then when he looks at the program, the timetable of God, and he says something, that thing is settled and steadfast forever and ever. His word is settled forever. And Jesus said, Behold, I come as a thief. I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and he see a shame. As you understand that keepeth his garments you know if you are preparing for the wedding and you have a special clothes you want to put on on the wedding day you don't say you know go where there is much and flood and then you are wearing that wedding garment and you're walking leisurely and the cars are passing and they splash all kinds of rubbish on that garment if you are putting on the wedding garment, you don't go into the kitchen and then you are, you know, juggling oil and pepper and tomato and all the onions and everything splashing on the wedding garment. That's what it means. We're living in this world and we have the garment of salvation. We have the robe of righteousness. You're not, you know, going near dirty people with that robe of righteousness and garment of salvation. You're not going near occultic people. You're not going around the people that will splash rubbish and dirt on your garment that should be ready for the coming of the Lord. You preserve yourself from all those dirt or dirty things. That's what it means. So that 
you will not be ashamed on that day. Look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. In Revelation chapter 3, we're looking at verse 11, the prophetic word on Christ's return. It says, Behold, I come quickly, I come very soon. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. It's assuring us we already have a crown. You've been a Christian now for five years, for 10 years, for 20 years, and you've been serving the Lord faithfully. The Lord has a reward waiting for you. I'm talking about somebody there. I said the Lord has a reward waiting for you, and you want to hold fast, you know. You've just graduated, and here is your certificate, and you wrote your name there, and then you said, I didn't know I could earn, I could have a certificate like this, and there are people, they specialize in stealing, they can steal passport, they can steal certificate, and they can cleverly remove that person's name and put their name, and then this is a person who just puts the certificate there, is is labored, is studied, is worked hard for that certificate, and he puts it there. He's so happy, he's so joyful, and he thinks everybody is happy and delighted with him. And then while he's turning away, somebody steals the certificate. Satan will not steal your certificate of entry into heaven. And then, where is my certificate? Where is my certificate? That's why the Lord said, what you have, that testimony, what you have, that triumph, what you have, that overcoming life, what you have, hold it fast that no man take your crown. Nobody will take my crown. We're looking at Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Revelation chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 7. It says, behold, I come quickly. Now, if Jesus said something once, that's important. If he says it twice, it's doubly important. If he says it three times, if he says it seven times, you can be sure that thing is the most important fact you ought to hold, you ought to grab. It says again, behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, behold, I come quickly again and again and again and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be look at verse 20 there in verse 20 he says it again he will testify this six says surely i come quickly amen even so come lord jesus is coming again I said it's coming again. It's the prophetic word that cannot be contradicted, that cannot be cancelled. Look at number two. Number two there is the practical warning on constant readiness. Practical warning on constant readiness. We're looking at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. In Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 32, but of that day, and that hour noise no man no not the angels which are in heaven neither the son but the father hold on here there is a revelation there is a mystery part of that mystery we know christ is coming part of that mystery we know very soon suddenly unannounced he will come and then there is one part of that mystery that is not known to any king any ruler any leader in the world not known to any prophet any preacher any pastor any apostle on earth not known to any angel gabriel or michael in heaven not known even to the holy ghost even to christ but only the father has a monopoly of that fact and he keeps that fact and anybody that says i know the day of his coming is a damned and doomed liar because that truth and that date is kept only in the heart and the mind of the father now if the father god in heaven keeps that as a secret he will not even tell his only begotten son how can a man somewhere, anywhere come and say what God has not revealed to the Son, he has revealed it unto me, is a damned and doomed liar. They will not lie to you, they will not deceive you in Jesus' name. But of that day and that hour, no is no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Verse 33, in verse 33, take heed and watch and pray. 
for ye know not when the time is. That's what calls us to constant readiness. In verse 34, it tells us, for the Son of Man is as a man taking a fat journey, who led his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work. And to every man his work. Now, when our children go for the exam, every child is given his or her question paper. And everyone is given the paper to write the answer on. And if that child, instead of writing on his own paper with his own name, will take the paper that belongs to another person and being generous and being nice, let me write it for you. And then he writes for this other student. And by the time they are collecting the papers, his own paper is empty. It has nothing. He has not written anything on his own paper, but he's busy writing on the paper of another. And they collect, well, his paper has zero input and the paper is going to score zero it may be intelligent it may be energetic she may be a kind of generous whatever but there is zero entry into his paper and it's going to have zero what am i saying the lord has given every believer every child of god his work and if there is a believer that will not concentrate on his work and is busy on the work of another person, on the assignment given to another person, and is busy and is sweating and doing what belongs to others, but his own record is empty. He's not interested in what God has given him. He records zero and is going to score zero and there will be no reward on the final day. I will not be a foolish worker. I said I will not be a foolish worker. You allow the others to do their job and then you concentrate on your job because the son of man is as a man taking a fat journey who left his house and he gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded them the porter to watch verse 35 in verse 35 watch ye therefore for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at crowing or in the morning look at what jesus is saying there he's saying you don't know when the lord will come he says in that verse 35 it says at evening when the day's work is over and somebody says it's evening time i want to go and relax in the cinema house i want to go and relax in the nightclub he may come at the evening what will he meet you doing he says or oh, at midnight in the midnight he comes when people are supposed to be sleeping the previous day was a careless day the previous day was spent wasting your life you sin and then you slept tomorrow you're feeling guilty but then you say i'll settle it tomorrow morning i'll be all right in the morning and then in the morning i'll, I'll take extra time to have quiet time he comes in the midnight where will you be or at cock crowing or in the morning the lord is telling us we should be constantly ready and constantly watchful and constantly prepared when he will come. Then he says in verse 36, it says, Let's come in suddenly, he find you sleeping spiritually. Verse 37, he says, What I say unto you, my immediate apostles, I say unto all, watch. Well, well, watch. You will watch. So that that day will not come upon you unawares in Jesus' name. We're coming to Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 36. It tells us, what she therefore and pray always. What she therefore and pray always. What does that mean? Temptation comes. Don't talk. Watch. Pray. Trial comes. Something pinches you. Something irritates you. Something wants to wake up the dead beast and the dead lifestyle in you to get angry and then to make your peace and then to fight. Don't do that. Watch and pray. At every time when the tendency and the breeze of the world may come upon you to react like the people of the world and to get ready to fight it out and to forget about your Lord's coming, watch and pray always. Sometimes when you are happy, you misbehave. Sometimes when you're happy, when some people are happy, they go to drink, they're excited. And because of their excitement, they forget themselves. At that time when good things happen and you have the tendency of becoming careless and speaking flippantly because you're happy, 
watch ye therefore and pray always that she will be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. You will be ready. Say, I will be ready. Number three now. Number three is our prayerful watchfulness with Christ-like righteousness. With Christ-like righteousness. He tells us in First John chapter 2, verse 28. First John chapter 2. We're reading from verse 20. We're reading from verse 28. It says, and now little children, and now young believers, and now standing believers who are much younger than John the Beloved, abide in him. Abide in his word. Abide in your conviction. Abide in the work of grace that the Lord has effected in your life. And now little children, believers, beloved believers, abide in holiness and righteousness that when it shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed at his coming. There are people who will be ashamed when he comes. They'll be ashamed because they're not ready. They'll be ashamed because they're like foolish virgins. They'll be ashamed because uh, something pulls them down. The load of sin, the weight of sin, their besetting sin pulls them down. They'll be ashamed because they're careless. They'll be ashamed because when they could have gotten ready and be washed and be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, they were not ready. But it says, little children, abide in him. Abide in everything he has done in your life that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I pray you will not be ashamed. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. First John chapter 3, verse 1. In first John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. In verse 2, it says, Now, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That will happen to you. You will see him. The church will not go and leave you behind. You will see him in Jesus' name. And then in verse 3, it says in verse 3, And every man, every woman, every person, every creature, every child of God that has this hope in him, purifies himself even as he is pure. Look at verse 7 there. In verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. The people who are waiting and expecting to be ready when Christ will come, they are the people who are righteous, even as he is righteous. They have Christ-like righteousness. It tells us in Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 12, it says, teaching us that the grace that appears to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and what they lost, what they lost will try, or want to sneak back into your life, you deny it, you debar it, you stop it. You resist it, teaching us that denying ungodliness and what it lost, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. In verse 14, we're told, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You'll be ready. I will be ready. The righteousness of Christ will see the full in your heart when Christ comes in Jesus' name. While you are in church, you are righteous. If you are not righteous in church, you cannot be righteous any other place. When you have sin surrounding you, when you have the word of God being preached unto you, and when you have all other believers, they are praying, asking to be ready, and when you have everybody sitting well, standing well, and everybody centering their affection on things above in the church, if you cannot be righteous in the church, you cannot be righteous any other place. But the people who are waiting for the coming of the Lord in the church, they're righteous at home, they're righteous in the community, they're righteous in the office, they're righteous. Whatever is happening, they say, I'm not going to miss that rapture. You will not miss the rapture. 
in second peter chapter 3 verse 11 second peter chapter 3 we're looking at verse 11 it says seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness and then in verse 12 it says we're looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat but then he tells us in verse 13 he says nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness and then in verse 14 it says wherefore beloved seeing that she look for such things be diligent that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless i pray when that day comes you'll be ready if there's going to be any number one to be ready you'll be the number one to be ready in jesus name we'll meet up there i said we'll meet up there you'll be there and every sanctified soul every righteous soul everyone that is washed in the blood of the lamb will be ready and your place will not be missing on that day in jesus name when he comes which nobody knows because he can come anytime when he comes sanctification that you have will be intact in jesus name and the holiness and the righteousness you have will be intact in jesus name and at the sound of the trumpet when the dead shall rise and then we which are alive shall be caught all together to meet them in the air then that magnet from heaven will magnetize you and take you up up you'll be there and then so shall we forever be with the lord you'll not be missing in jesus name now point number three after we are gone something will happen over here in the world the punishable wickedness of falling forsaking babylon look at revelation chapter 16 verse 19 revelation chapter 16 verse 19 and the great city was divided into three parts now when it says great city what's your picture of a great city you know sometimes there are um, there are people that qualify and that estimate how great a city is and they look at you know what makes a city great they look at the economy great city they look at the road network networks great city they look at the healthcare, great city they look at their educational institutions great city and they look at their tourism great city they look at the living lifestyle the living standard of the people great city and then other people even from here and from there they're rushing to that place we've heard it's a great city but they don't know what will happen to the great city i pray in these last days god will keep us will not be running helter skelter in jesus name there are people who run to great cities where there's no real bible believing fellowship there are people that run to great cities where idolatry and fornication and evil and worldliness is just filled the place all they're looking for they're looking for good economy they're looking for good education they're looking for civilization they're looking for this and that not knowing that very soon in a few hours in a few days all the greatness of that city will be wiped out by the indignation and the wrong of God it says and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath there are three things we're looking at here number one the fury and fierceness against filthy Babylon feel the babylon look at any great city today they are a picture a replica of the great babylon crime is rampant in all those great cities and when christ comes and the bride of christ is taken out of the world there'll be the fury and the fierceness against feel the babylon number two and the fire forever for forsaking blasphemers blasphemers the people that will blaspheme god they're not satisfied with just forsaking god and leaving god alone they recognize god is there in heaven and all their punishment is coming from that great god and the fury and the fire is coming from that great god and they will be blaspheming and the lord will forsake them and then they'll face the fury of the fire forever and ever number three is the faith and the faithfulness of firm believers the believers who say 
the sea may rage we're firm believing the lord and the storm may come but we're firm in believing the lord persecution trial and temptation may come but we're firm and focused and fixed in believing the lord and we're going to abide in the lord forever those people you will never be compounded you will never be ashamed and the glory of god will be upon your life and when you will come you'll not be found wanting in jesus name i thought the church will give a good amen Number one, number one is the fury and fierceness against filthy Babylon. Filthy Babylon. Look at um, Isaiah chapter 13. We're reading from verse 19. Isaiah chapter 13. And we're reading from verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms and the beauty of the Chaldeans' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. The fury will come. The fierceness of the wrath of God will come upon filthy Babylon. And Babylon will be as Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at Revelation chapter 19 verse 15. Revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 15 and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it it shall smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of God. It will be terrible on the earth but thank God you will not be here at that time. Number two here, number two is the fire forever for forsaking blasphemers. In Revelation chapter 16 verse 20, Revelation chapter 16, reading from verse 20, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. In verse 21, it says, and there fell upon men great hail out of heaven, every stone about the wage of a talent, and men blasphemed God. Men blasphemed God. Can, can you think about those who are under divine chastisement, divine wrath, divine indignation, and divine anger, and the judgment of God is falling upon them, the first angel, and for the bell, the second, the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh, for in their wrath, and the water is affected, and the air is affected, and the ground is affected, and then the sun is affected, and the scorching men, and punishment is coming from every direction, and hills are also coming upon them, and striking them down, and crushing them, and instead of repenting, instead of saying, we know it is our sin that brought this on us, all they will do is to blaspheme the name of God because all these plagues came from God and they were suffering with great suffering. It tells us in Revelation chapter 16 verse 9. Look at verse 9 there. In verse 9, it tells us of their blasphemy. In Revelation chapter 16 verse 9, a man was scorched with great heat and they blasphemed the name of God which has power over these plagues and repented not to give him glory. They repented not to give him glory and the fire and the fury and their punishment will be forever and ever in Revelation chapter 14 verse 10. Revelation chapter 14 reading from verse 10 it says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and it shall be tormented with fire tormented with fire tormented with fire and brimstone for in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And then it says in verse 11, it says, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up. How long? Tell me out aloud how long? Forever and ever. They heard about salvation. They didn't get saved. They heard about holiness, follow peace with God, follow peace with men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They didn't even make any attempt to have peace with God and to have peace in their heart and to have peace with their fellow man. And they heard they vowed the necessity of watching and praying so they will be ready when the Lord will come. No, they will not watch. No, that's not their concern. And they remained careless until the bride of Christ was taken away and they remained careless until the wrath and the indignation began to pour upon this. Uh, well, this is the final end, the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest they have no recreation there is no relaxation day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name what will they be doing they continue in sin with hardness of heart and without any repentance revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 20 revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 20 it says and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before them, with which he deceived.
preach them that receive the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone i will not be there in Revelation chapter 20, we're looking at verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, and we're reading from verse 10. It tells us, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I will not be there. Look at verse 15 there. In verse 15, it tells us, Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Uh, the question is, is your name in the book of life? Are you born again? Are you a child of God? Are you a member of the family of God? Has your name been written in the book of life? And does your name remain in the book of life? Because whosoever, anywhere, any time whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire now when they will be in you know on the earth and in the suffering like that those of us who are saved sanctified holy righteous ready for the lord we will be enjoying what the lord and what the saints up in heaven in jesus name that glorious day it will be wonderful when we are in the presence of god to see you there and say brother you made it yes by the grace of god in the strength of the lord by the power enablement of the holy ghost you'll make it i'll make it will make it in jesus name look at number three now number three is the faith and the faithfulness of firm believers the faith and the faithfulness of firm believers the people who say i have laid my hands on the plow i will not turn back the people who say i believe in the lord and i will not stop my journey halfway i have i'm holding on to the lord and forever and ever i will be with the lord their mind is set they are focused and they are fixed and they say this gospel i have this salvation i have nothing will take it away from my hand be it so for you in jesus name look at psalm 112 psalm 112 we're reading from verse 7 psalm 112 we're looking in at verse 7 he shall not be afraid of evil tidings he shall not be afraid of bad news he shall not be afraid of whatever they say in the news they hear on the radio they see on the net they see in the newspapers everybody is running they're running away and then some people say are you not going to run away run away to where there's no church and where there's no security and run away to where the power of god will not be there the people of god will not be there it says no i'm not afraid because the lord is with me the lord will be with you his strength will be with you his grace will be with you he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is tell me his heart is my heart is your heart it speaks trust in in the lord you'll be firm and fixed and focused until the end in jesus name psalm 57 i'm looking at verse 7 psalm 57 we're looking at verse 7 it says in verse 57 verse 7 my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed the wind is blowing the tempter is tempting the trials are multiplying and the situation of the world is going from bad to worse all the same my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed we're looking at psalm 108 verse 1 psalm 108 we're looking at verse 1 it says oh god my my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Whatever may be happening, your heart will remain fixed until the very end. In Jesus' name, this gospel you have discovered and this gospel you possess, nothing will take it away from your life and from your heart. In Jesus' name, Isaiah chapter 50, I'm reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 50, we're looking at verse 7. It says, for the Lord God will help me. The Lord God will help me. Looks like I'm the only one in the house today. The Lord God will help me. In a time of trial, it will help you. In a time of temptation, it will help you. In a time when everybody is running up and out, helter skelter, the Lord will help you. In the time when everybody is collapsing because of the challenges upon them, the Lord will help you. Look at that again. I see a 50 verse 7. For the Lord God will help me therefore shall i not be confounded i will not be confused i will not be confounded i will not be conquered 
I will not be defeated. I will not be trampled on. I will not be denied. I've lost my people. It says, therefore, because the Lord will help me, therefore, I will not be confounded. Therefore, have I searched my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. When Christ comes, you will not be ashamed. When the trumpet sounds, you will not be ashamed. And when the angels welcome the saints to heaven, you will be present there. You will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. When Christ divides the sheep from the goat, and then he says, goat will go to the other side, but the sheep and the children of God and the saints of God will go up with him. You will be there. You will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. Congratulations. Happy time for you. And the grace of God multiply in your life, in this life, in any time, every time. You will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. What are you? I will not be ashamed. What are you? I will not be ashamed. What are you? I will not be ashamed. Satan will not catch you. Evil will not catch you. Demons will not catch you. Temptations will not catch you. The trials will not catch you. You will not, you will not fade off and you will not die in the middle of the road. The Lord is coming. He will help you. He will help you. And you set your face as a fleet and you say, I will make it. And you will not be ashamed forever and ever in Jesus' name. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. My brothers and sisters, what a timely message. We are in the last day. You want to pray. You want to pray that you will not be left behind. You will not be left behind. When the Antichrist will come here or not to unleash his terror, his wrath upon the people of the earth, you will not be here. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and ask for the grace of God that you will not be ashamed. That the Lord will help you. That the Lord will help you. These are trying times. These are difficult times. But you want to pray that no matter the difficulties and the trials here on earth, you will not be ashamed. That the Lord will keep you to the very end. If you are not yet born again, you to come before the Lord and surrender yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Wash me with the blood of Jesus Christ. I will not be here when the Antichrist will unleash his terror upon the people of the earth. Pray that prayer and talk to the Lord. Pray that prayer and talk to the Lord. That the Lord will help you. My brother, that the Lord will help you. My sister, that the Lord will help you. Your heart will be fixed. Your mind will be fixed. You will be trusting the Lord. You will be trusting the Lord. You will be trusting the Lord. Talk to the Lord. That the Lord himself will help you. That the Lord himself will help you. You will not be deceived. You will not be deceived by the Antichrist. The wonders, the lying wonders of the Antichrist. You will not be deceived. There is punishment for all those lawless worshippers of the beast. You will not partake in the worship, in the deception of the Antichrist. Remember that Antichrist is already in the war. Now that Antichrist is already here. You want to pray and talk to the Lord that the Lord himself will keep you. The spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. There is a lot of deception out there. There is a lot of things that is contending against the Bible. But you want to pray that you will not be deceived. That the Lord will keep you. All the lying wonders, all the deception of the Antichrist, with the Lord himself will keep you. You will not wander away. You will not wander out of the of the saints, you will not wander out of the doctrines, the sound doctrines of the word of God we've been taught in this church, 
by our Father and the Lord and all our pastors that the Lord has been using to teach us this doctrine, this word of God, you will not wander away. Pray and talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord that you will be watchful. You will be watchful. Christ himself has given us that prophetic word. He is coming again. Jesus is coming again. Either the Antichrist likes it or not, Jesus is coming again. No thing on this earth can stop him. He's coming, number one, to take us home to himself, and then he's coming again to rule upon the surface of the whole earth. You want to pray that when Christ will come at the rapture to take his saints away, you will not be missing, I will not be missing. Let's talk to the Lord. Giving the warning already of constant readiness that we need to be ready at all times. We need to be prepared at all times because he will come as a thief in the night. He will come as a thief in the night. You want to pray that you will not be careless, my brother. You will not be careless, my sister. That the Lord himself will help you that you will be ready. I will be ready. Pray and talk to the Lord. Anything in your life that wants to make you not be ready for the coming of the Lord, you want to pray that the Lord himself will take it away. Talk to the Lord. You want to have that prayerful watchfulness with Christ-like righteousness. The righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of Christ that the Lord will give it to you. That righteousness. That righteousness. The Lord will clothe you. You will not allow the righteousness, your garment of righteousness to be stained with the pollution and the mud out there in the world. Let's pray and talk to the Lord. Because the Lord is coming for a spotless church, a blameless church, a church without any wrinkle. You want to pray that the Lord himself will help you, just like we learned even last week Sunday, we are the temple of the living God. The Lord will help you to keep your garment of righteousness, your garment of holiness, that you will not be defied. I will not be defied. Let's pray and talk to the Lord and ask that the Lord himself will keep us in righteousness, in full holiness all the days of our life. So that when he comes on that day to take his saints away, we will not be ashamed. I will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. We will hear the sound of the trumpet. We will be, remain steadfast. We will remain fixed. We will remain focus let's talk to the lord because there is eternal judgment that is coming upon all the backsliders upon all the blasphemers upon all those hypocritical christians that come into a congregation like this and they are still not yet saved there is the fury of fire there is the forever fire that all those whose names are not in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. My brother is your name in the book of life. My sister is your name in the book of life. You want to present yourself to the Lord this very day and say, Lord, help me that my name will be in the book of life. My name will not be taken out of the book of life. That the Lord will keep you. You want to pray and talk to the Lord. And you want to remain firm. You want to remain steadfast. You want to remain righteous. That when the Lord will come to take his saints away, you will not be missing. I will not be missing. The grace of the Lord is sufficient. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, my hand, dear Lord. Oh, my hands make me strong, Lord. Make me stand. I've come alone. Have 
long way to go. turn back. Jesus is praying for you. Jesus has gone to prepare that mansion for you. My brother, my sister, nobody will take your mansion. Nobody will take my own mansion. Take, take it to yourself. Nobody will take my own mansion. Nobody will take my own crown. Nobody will take my own reward. Be steadfast, I will be firm, I will be focused, I will be faithful, I will remain steadfast, I will be fervent, I will be prayerful, I will be watchful to the very end. And the Lord will establish all this your commitment in Jesus' name. Stop your hand, we are going to pray together. Father, we thank you for the revelation of your word through our Father and the Lord this very day. Thank you, Lord, for the challenge we have received this day. Lord, that we must remain prayerful, watchful, fine, focused, faithful, holy, and righteous, to the very end. Lord, we just commit ourselves to your hand this very day. We know we cannot make this on our own. We need your grace. We need your strength. We need your divine enablement. The temptations are strong, 
But Jesus is stronger than our temptations. The trials are fears, but Jesus is greater than all our trials. The troubles and the tribulations all around us are overwhelming, but we have Jesus that can speak peace, be still, and everything is going to be all right. Lord, I pray that you will keep us. You will uphold us. You will strengthen us. As many that have been falling and rising before, today you will receive strength to stand. The grace to stand. You will give to your people, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that none of us will be deceived. We will not fall into the deception of the Antichrist. We will not fall into the perversion of false brethren. We will not fall into the deception of the false Christ all around us. In Jesus' name, the grace to remain steadfast, to remain faithful, to remain strong in times of trials and temptations and tribulation, to remain strong in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray you will give every one of us here that grace in Jesus' name. Help us to be watchful. Help us to be watchful. We will not be careless. We will wash over our lives. We will wash over our habits. We wash over our conduct. We wash over our behavior. And Lord, I pray that when you come to take your church home, none of us here will be missing in Jesus' name. Give us that grace, that grace to be ready, that grace to be righteous, that grace to be holy, that grace to be spotless. That grace to be blameless. Give us that grace, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray. Lord, it will not be long. It will not be long. We can see the signs everywhere. The earthquakes, the walls, the hardship. We can see the signs everywhere. Jesus will soon come. He is coming for the church. He is coming for his church. Lord, I pray that on that day when you come to take your people home, none of us here will be ashamed. None of us here will be left behind. Lord, give us that grace that every one of us we will make it on that day in Jesus' name. And to make it require that we must be ready. We must be prepared. We must be watchful. We must be prayerful. We must be holy. We must be righteous. We must remain engaged in the service of the Lord. All that is required for us to accomplish so that we can make it at the rapture. Lord, I pray, give every one of us here that grace in Jesus' name. The joy of Christ is that the man he has gone to prepare for us that we will receive it. The joy of our Father in the Lord is that when he gets to heaven, he wants to see us on that heaven. The joy of our pastor here is that when he gets to heaven, he wants to see every member of the church here in Abadi in heaven. Lord, I pray our joy will be full. Help us, Lord, to make it. Give us that grace to make it. No matter the trials, no matter the temptations, no matter the challenges and the difficulties we are facing here on earth, Lord, I pray that none of these things will make us to miss the rapture. Keep us ready. Keep us watchful. Keep us steadfast. Keep us prayerful. And I pray that on that day, 
when you come to take your people home, Lord, we will be counted worthy to go with you. Pray that the message we've had today, we will not just hear this message, but we will go back and pray in and make sure that everything we've had, we will be the doers of your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you've an answer. Worship and we exalt your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we be seated, please, briefly, very briefly? I know we'll soon be leaving now. We've almost come to the end of our service. But before we go, like I told us earlier, we have some August visitors in our midst. The newest couple, uh, they married last year, November, but our sister is here now. And as a church, we want to welcome them warmly into the fellowship of God's people and also to pray for them. And as we pray for them, we are believing the Lord that the Lord himself is going to do great things in their family in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So I just need five minutes of your time. We invite our brother and sister. Brother and sister Okechuku, please. Uh, can we come forward, please? But God stay. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. Clap for them. Okay, just face the congregation. You are welcome to, to the church. We are going to pray for them. Shall we just rise up together now? Let's rise up together. Stretch your hand towards them. And you want to pray. Abraham's blessing. Abraham's blessing. Abundant blessing. The blessing of fruitfulness. The blessing of prosperity will be the Lord of this family in the name of Jesus. That as the Lord has brought them into this city of Aberdeen, the Lord will establish them. Their home will be blessed. Let's open our mouth and pray for them. Pray for them. Stretch forth your hand. Pray for them. Lord, bless them. Their blessing will be ten times better. Ten times greater in the name of Jesus. Let's lift up the, let's pray. Every evil hands against them, the Lord will cancel it. All their hard desire, this home will be established on the foundation of Christ. That is established on the foundation of Christ. The devil itself will not be able to destroy that foundation. That foundation will stand. Pray, pray for them, pray for them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pray for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for uh, the family of our brother and sister Augustine. Thank you for what you've started already in this family. Lord, we are praying and we are asking that you will open the windows of heaven. And you will command the blessings of Abraham, the blessings of Israel, the blessing of the children of Christ. You will command that blessing upon this family in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your hand will be upon them. This home that is founded on the foundation of Christ. Lord, I pray that that foundation will not be shaking in Jesus' name. Lord, as they open their mouth and pray as a family, you will grant speedy answers to all their requests in Jesus' name. The promise of Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 will be theirs. That before they open their mouth and ask, you will answer them. You will bless them. Your blessing will be upon them. Your blessing will be upon them. They shall possess the gates of their enemies in Jesus' name. Lord, even in this city, they shall be established. 
this family will be established. The grace of the Lord will be upon them. The hand of the Lord will be upon them. Lord, I pray that your divine protection will be upon them. No evil hand will come near them in Jesus' name. Lord, there shall be fruitfulness. There shall be abundance. There shall be righteousness. More of your grace. Greater grace you will give to them in this home in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that, Lord, for them and every family is here in our church, your end will be upon everyone. And this year, as you have given us that promise, we will possess our possessions in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you've had an answer. Worship and we exalt for your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Shall we just welcome our sister again? Let's clap for her. Let's clap for them. Clap for them. You are welcome. You are welcome, my sister. You can go to your seat. Amen. The Lord has blessed us already. The blessings shall be permanent in Jesus' name. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, sisters, please, we'll be having prayer meeting tomorrow by 9 p.m. And then um, the venue is Zoom. Please, if you are not on that group or you don't have the link to that prayer meeting, quickly before you go, please see our mother behind, uh, Mommy Adebayo. Please see her behind so that I can get the link uh, to that prayer meeting. It's very important uh, you attend. All our announcements remain same. Please let's endeavor uh, to map out time to attend all these meetings. Uh, by the grace of God, there's full share behind. Uh, as you go out, as you make your way out, one per family. Please do well to take yours. Let's rise up together as we share the grace in fellowship. Um, immediately we share the grace. Please, I'd like us to quickly come to the front to have a photograph section with the new couple very quickly please so just position ourselves and then we'll take the photograph together at the count of two one two the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen thank you and god bless you Thank you.